Right, so it's true. You live, it's still, is it uni digs or is it just a uni house? It's not uni digs, it is a uni house. So it's basically in, in Loughborough, which is where I'm studying. Mate, that is yeah. brilliant. I mean, I know, I know what you boys get paid. So coming back to your uni mates with a bags full of 25 Gs every game. <laughs> You'll be laughing, loving it. Hello, and thanks for joining us on this week's uh, Offload. Uh, joined, as always, by Ryan and by Max. And later on, we'll have England and Leicester star Freddie Stewart on the show as well. Uh, first up, Max, how was your day at Cheltenham, followed by Six Nations weekend as well? So in the end, lads, my professionalism got the better of me and I had to forfeit going to Cheltenham. Oh, because... you... That, oh, you just make me it's sick. Pathetic. Yeah, but then what? I was like, thingy was telling me if I got another aspiration, it would have been it would have broken his record, the specialist, the radiologist, for how many times he's aspirated a calf. So I was like, well, if I spend a day on my feet, on the piss in very uncomfortable shoes, could that make it the fifth time? So I thought better of it and I was like, take your calf seriously, man. This is this is a serious now. You're in your thirties. You're a prop, Ford. Get it right. And that's what I did. I'm sorry, Ryan. Apparently, Gary Mack was there as well. I was gutted. Oh, I was gutted to, I that's to what, see the big that's, geezer. That's what a wheelchair's for, mate. Like that, genuinely. I I think, and easy access everywhere. You would have been just roll around wherever you wanted to go. Mate, that is when a wheelchair comes in you. So I remember we went to South um, Africa and I hurt my knee. And I was like, I need to play next week. But I wanted to go out and see the sights. <laughs> The physio's like, you can't be on your feet. You've hurt your knee. If you want to play next week, you can't be on your feet. So I genuinely went and took a wheelchair from the hotel lobby and made Callum Gibbons push me around um, South Africa in a wheelchair. <laughs> and I even saw the ref in the <laughs> shopping mall who was reffing us that weekend. I was like, oh, mate, like, what's happened? And I'm like, oh, you know, a bit of a sore knee. And then I played that weekend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. what's going on? down to the wheelchair and Callum. What a, what a good bloke. But you know what I mean? I just thought a bit of... Uh, Stay off my feet, so yeah, I did that. So you could have done that, mate. You, oh. Wheelchair all the time, bro. I don't know about that. I don't want to be R2D2, like a Dalek just being shipped around, but well, yeah, maybe some people do their whole life. So a day at Cheltenham would be lovely. I think you could have got even more drunk, just sat yeah, there, just, just catheterin. Yeah, just <laughs> oh, mate, that's a dream. <laughs> That is the dream. I'm Just you. marinating in, in the in the tweed. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> uh, uh, oh well. Let's um let's move on to potentially the biggest upset, not just of the year, but of the last five years <laughs> in the Six Nations. Wales losing 21-22 at home to Italy, ending Italy's 36-game losing streak. Uh, Max, what were your emotions watching that? Well, we, right. I was like, well, I've got that prediction wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I lost my mind. I was like, this is outstanding. And then I remember reading an interview with Garbisi like earlier on, Paolo the 10, a while back. I think it was at the beginning of the tournament. And he was talking about how much it would mean just to get one W. And then you just saw the man when he sunk that goal and you were like, wow. I, was, I, I got a bit empathetic. I was like, oh my God. I'm part of this right now. <laughs> Emotionally, I'm in there with him. He just cries out in absolute, utter ecstasy as he kind of, as he ends the seven-year drought. My God. Yeah, it was very, very poignant. Very poignant. That's the loudest I've, like, cheered for, for the season. Yeah. Like, watching that. I could see him doing it. Like, I genuinely, watching the game, I was like, hold on, they've got, they, they've got <laughs> props chasing 70 metres down the field, looking yeah. for turnovers. Like, What's going on here? Like they wanted it, and you could just see it happening. And when they kicked that ball, I was like, "Holy! Oh, here he goes! Here goes Angie! Here goes Angie again!" He's got the name again. of the grandma, but here goes Angie. Oh, He's off. Angie was nuts, wasn't it? Oh, the tails were up. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So, listen, you, do you feel from but and bigger? Alan Wynne Jones, hundredth cap, hundred fiftieth cap, and you got Angie Capowitz. So, is that exact? Capuzzo, and he's just come on, man. And he's just pissed all over the shredded their day of glory. Yeah. The Italian villain, but amazing you, to see. What, what, like, how this, good for the wee man. Yeah, unbelievable from the baby faced assassin. But did you see that tweet going around of um, all of Alan Wynne Jones' milestone games? 
Like they're all blighted by curses, like oh, losses, all these very strange things, like the Lions captain game against Japan, like stuff like that. His fiftieth losing, hundredth losing. It was, it was, it was fascinating. I was like, oh my god, it's happened again. <laughs> Oh, God, they should have had someone look into that. They should have had someone mm. look into that before. Yeah, they should have got the... He's got a bloody poltergeist on him. What about uh, what about Josh Adams, by the way, at the end? Did you see that? Him giving the man yeah. the medal over to... Uh, that was that's pure. That was that's pure. rugby. That's rugby, people. That's beautiful. Do you know yeah, what I mean? see that, that was a very genuine act, wasn't it? I really enjoyed that as well. It was a lovely, lovely image. Yeah, fair play to him for that. Absolutely love that. So big respect to you, Josh Adams, for that. Although I read somewhere that he refused to accept it and gave it back, but I saw him take it. Yeah, they looked like they hugged it out and he was like very, he looked very uh, bashful about it, yeah. Because even, um, who was doing the, was it Campagnaro doing the commentary? can't remember. Whoever was doing the ca- commentaries, he... he um, he said, "Oh, they, you know, they gave the man of the match just five minutes too early, like jokingly, and uh, and then they go and do that, and you see it happen." But yeah, touch of class there, wasn't it? Also, having the whereabouts to you look, you thought he was going to pin his ears back right at the end, didn't you? And then actually just passing inside for, for the for the straight win because that would have been a much tougher conversion uh, with a, with a point down, essentially. Yeah, yeah, true. He, he was very composed there as well, like seventy eighth minute. Just pulls pulls it up. You see Moriarty push um, Padovani. I was like, oh, if he pushed him into like a forward pass, that would have been very spicy. Yeah. And um, but Padovani's he's just pulled up the brakes and he's passed it back inside. Let's talk about uh, Jonathan Davies said that Wayne Pivak has committed a sackable offence by losing to Italy at home. Uh, Jonathan Davies, Jiffy rather than Foxy, obviously. He- would not get picked again if he said that. But um, Wales have finished fifth a year after winning the championship. Do, do we think that's the right call? Is it time to get rid of him? What was what? But the year before that, was were they fifth and then they won it? No, it was, they won it last year. They won it twenty. They won it last year. Last year, but the year not before that. Cards. Oh, so you're gonna say that they were they had the they had the will of the gods beside them. Aiding them. I'm not. I'm not saying anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're saying that there was a misleading championship? Uh, okay. It was. It's a pretty out there statement. Isn't Mate, it? It's I, hard though. That's tough because look what he's been working with. The only thing I'll say is, have you? I've never seen a team get changed so much over Six Nations. Like the Wales team seemed to have. Like I just was like, he's just changing everyone all the time. It was nutty. There was a few mainstayers, but like in a lot of positions where um, obviously there have been injuries to very high profile, like probably like world-class, we'll say, um, Welsh players that haven't been there. Toby Faletau returns towards the end. Obviously, Dan Biggers starts, um, that sort of thing. Alan Wood jones has been out. Tiprit, pretty much irreplaceable. George North, he was looking absolutely fuego up until his injury at 13, like really rediscovering some form. Um, so, it's, I don't know, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, I, listen, I don't, I don't think so. I think you've got to give him time. Like, you look at all the games that Wales lost, they didn't lose by much. Like, you, they nearly beat Three. the French, didn't they? they, they yes, they the did. French on the ropes. Mm. Obviously, you, you, you remember what, what what we were saying when we came into the championship? We were saying, oh, they're going to have a tough old time. Their, their club sides are doing terribly. Um, mm. They've got no hope. And they obviously got that win against Scotland. But yeah, it, it, I, I don't know, would we be saying, It'd be very different had that couple of weeks have not scored that try and suddenly they've won. They've ground out a game against Italy. Yeah, probably it was a terrible performance. But give them time there. You know what I mean? They've not played that bad in the in the championship. So you know, I think it's a, a little bit premature for me. A bit premature. Yeah, I, I, I shoot. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Is the if they won that game, what's the table standings then? What happens then? I think I if everyone's then on joint yeah. third, were they? It was like 10-10-10-10. Yeah, you're right. Oh, was that... it, it would go, it would have been, yeah, they would have gone up to, uh, no, they would have gone above. I think England would have finished fifth. Is that right? England or Scotland? Certainly, they would might have finished third, I think. Mad, um, mad, mad. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's small margins. But, I mean, Ryan, you've prepared for these, for, for games against Italy. You've spoken about it. In fact, your predictions throughout the tournament, you know, Ireland put 50 points, all these sort of things. And then we're suddenly saying, well, Wales have just had a bad day. Is that, 
you know, is that is that a fair assessment based on the historical matches that you've prepared for against that side? Yeah, well, again, the, I reckon the big issue here is it's at home. Like, if yes. Italy win, they win at home, at their ground over in Italy. And it's a different story. But it's the fact that they beat them at Millennium Stadium, you know, a lot of people lean on these big occasions, like the 100th from the 150th of Alan Wynne Jones. You know what I mean? They were like, they would have been speaking about it all week. So all these, you think of how they built the game up and then suddenly they go out and put out a performance like that. You think, Phew. but you've got to give credit to Italy. Like, man, they were, why don't they play like that all the bloody time? That's the problem. That's what frustrates me. Like they were going for it. And like I said, they had their they had props chasing absolutely everything. They were just, they were on it. One point that annoyed me is I, I was worried that I was worried the game had been thrown away. There was one point they were they were defending maybe 20, 30 metres out and Wales were hammering them, hammering and Dan Bigger had taken an injury and the ref stopped the play. It was nowhere near the, the, the moment yeah, of play. But then the, the ref stopped it, gave him a scrum. They got a scrum yeah. penalty, kicked to the corner and scored a driving ball. Suddenly you're like, oh, no, that's not fair. They've, they're now under the pump. They're going to lose this. Whereas I, I was watching that game thinking, Italy are going to do this. So I was worried that that had ruined the game. People would talk about, what was the other moment? There was another moment where they say that that try that he said wasn't a try. Well, have, I, have I lost the plot here? No, no. For Wales, there was a win. Uh, it was held up right at the, not not that long before the end. I think yeah. it was Jones. And, and so people would go back to that. But then you can easily counteract that with yeah. what, I've just, you know, what I've just explained there. So fair play to Italy, but they just need to play like that a bit more. You can't. You can't just have one game in seven years like that. I don't. I feel like their stock, their form had been sort of, it had been going up in the last sort of three games up leading up to this, last two games leading up to this. Um, the Irish one is obviously a big anomaly, seeing as they were playing with 13 men for most of the game. But um, I think they were like, this is it. Let's have a crack. Last game with a wooden spoon in it. That's, that's goo. And then... Maybe the um, Wales coming into a game like that at home, thinking they're going well, they've been competitive, got a little bit in, like a little bit complacent. You know what I mean? But yeah, rugby's a funny game like that. Isn't it? Well, let's let's flip this around. Like with with that, it, what's an incredible victory for the Azzurri from their perspective? You know, in Wales, then you look at their under twenties beating the English. They got three mm. wins um, out of the five matches in in that Six Nations. Yeah, have they proven? That they've got a future in the tournament, or sort of too little, too late. It's hard one, isn't it? Because it was funny how many people suddenly were like, you know, brilliant, we love it, it <laughs> be here. Yeah. All those, even Big Jim, he's been hammering them, hammering them, and then he's like, them. See, then there's a place there. them. You the can't just dog story. suddenly <laughs> swing on one bloody result, you know. I've Personally, and I hate to say it because I lo- I absolutely love seeing them do that uh, weekend, but bit yeah, a bit too late. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where they go after this. Um, but yeah, I'm still I, I still think they should be maybe some sort of relegation and uh, and another team coming up into it. Mm, Personal opinion. Very intriguing. I think That's- with Italy though, it's the grassroots in it. Like I was looking, I was doing a little bit of research trying to figure out what's going on here. Um, obviously, the under 20s victory was in particular is like a big highlight for them. But there's 61,000 registered Italian men playing rugby in a country of 29 million men. Italy's a big place, and then you've got just for comparison, Wales, who have a like a population of 1.5 million men and registered players 49,000. It's just like it's just not a priority at this point, really. Like you'd have to, it needs, if you're talking about trying to develop Italian rugby, you'd have to just, it has to be done from the ground up. Like uh, recruiting heavy hitters or not quite, or like in betweeners that haven't quite made it for that international level from other countries. It's just a short, it's like a, it's like a stop gap in it. It's not going to. Hold on. How really, many Welsh registered rugby players? 49,000. Look, I've, I've got these, this, this all? date. Well, Wales ain't a big place, is it? But that's less. Than, let me check. I mean, they've got a bigger pool, right? So yeah, but they've got a bigger pool. But like percentage-wise, that's massive, isn't it? Right. Yeah. 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 I'm not very good at maths, but yeah. Well, I've got this off. I've got the software, Wikipedia, lads. So very, 
very sketchy data. So if anyone, please right. in the comments tell us. And that's doesn't yeah, but uh, that's what it is. That's what that's sort of what I was trying to find out. I was trying to see more of the percentages for than anything else. But what do you think then? You reckon you reckon now they've won one game, Max? Keep them in. <sighs> it's too long, isn't it? I sort of agree with you. I think a relegation would be very interesting, and potentially there's countries who want it more that when they step up to that plate might 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 have more success. Imagine you were Georgia and Romania sat there. Yeah, like, I know. Why don't we get yeah, a shot? Like, why don't we get a crack? Yeah. I, no, you're right. Yeah. I think I think I'm in I'm in cahoots from you, sir. Uh, right. Let's go now to the Ireland Scotland game. And Scotland's away loss to the Irish Ireland winning 26 5 with a try bonus point. Right, having beaten England in round one, how have things gone downhill so quickly? Well, I don't think they've gone down that hill that quickly. That's uh, uh, that's what happens at the end of these, bro. Everyone's just look, look, throwing the babies look, out. Ireland, <laughs> Ireland absolutely trounced everyone, didn't they? Except France. France. Like, that could have gone. Yeah, that could have gone the other way. You know, and and the last game of the Six Nations. After all the chat, yeah. Uh, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. The wheels haven't fallen off. Ireland are a bloody good team at the moment. And we said that from the beginning. And I think we keep we focusing on how poor people have been. Let's focus on how good people have been. Ireland and France, you've got to give it to them. They've been pretty bloody good, haven't they? Especially France. So that's what happens when teams peak. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's what's happened. Yeah. Well, we'll, 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 have, we'll move on to that in a bit. I think we still want a tiny bit more from you just with regards to, you know, the fact that the team has lost those matches. Also, there was a big, big story around the Edinburgh Six who went out. The Edinburgh Six? Is that what <laughs> they're, they're called? called the Edinburgh Six? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just... They don't even sound like bombers. <laughs> <laughs> they're not terrorists. Yeah. The Edinburgh Six. <laughs> Mate, you're making it sound like bloody terrorists. Um, yeah, but that, look, there's that viral clip going online of you saw of um, of your your BFF Rob Kearney um, and Shane Horgan and, and Matt Williams slamming the Scottish team for the sort of the, the extra active extracurricular activities. You know, <laughs> what was your reaction what? to their rant? By the way, <laughs> did you see that clip of those three? Yeah. Oh, mate. Rob, Rob wasn't like that when I was with him in the hotel. He was no. like, oh. But it looked like a Morgan there. Like Shane Horgan yeah. looks like he's at a funeral. He with his little clipboard. Do you know what? We should get old Matt Williams, whatever his name, to coach. Get him in coaching. You know what I mean? His record speaks for himself. What? Three wins out of 17. I think that's, if I do the maths right, that's 17% win, win rate. Mm. The, the worst professional record of any Scottish coach, just to help you on that one. Well, there you are. Oh, gosh. Do you know what I mean? Um, and oh, I, do you know what annoys me about stuff like that is they don't have the full facts. They don't know exactly what's gone on. And I'll be careful what I say, but yeah, if players, especially Rob, he's, he's, about, he's about two weeks off the field and he's getting stuck right in there. And He's and already enough, in there. He's on this Irish TV, so he's giving the people what he wants. He's giving the people exactly what he wants. But you've got to know the facts. You've got to know exactly what's happened in that in that camp. And for me, was it made clear that they weren't allowed to go out and have a beer? I think they wouldn't have made such stupid decisions if, if that wasn't clear. So, But I don't know the ins and outs of it, so I can't really comment on it. Max, can you just, just for our listeners' uh, sakes, just remind us of what was actually said in the clip? Well, essentially that... They, there was a definitive ban after the Italy game from Gregor Townsend to the Scottish players. And six of them went out after hours. How very naughty of these grown men to have a few lovely ones in the, in the city of, of, of Rome. Um, and they're essentially like no, of them. What, is it Edinburgh? It was Edinburgh. They'd flown oh, back and got bad, back sorry. to Edinburgh. And oh, they flew back and got to Edinburgh. Okay, got you. And, when and they've gone beer. out. Well, apparently went another beer, but again, what? So, who told them that Greg Townsend had said there's a yeah, that's... no drinking ban? Who told them that? And where have they? No, where but, have you, that? no but Williams was going. I have close contacts within the camp, the physios, the backroom staff. It's not Greg's fault. It's the play, it's the players' faults. 
No Gregors. And I was just like, my God, this man's on an app. He's a, he's a witch hunter. He wants to drown them. He wants to burn them at the stake. All six of them in the squares of Edinburgh. Have them up on a pyre. Hanging from Murrayfield. Oh I know, God. that's what he wants. That's what he wants. He ain't getting it. Man, oh, man. Yeah. I know. It's been blown out of proportion. It. It's been blown out of proportion, boys. But it's, um, it is what it is. It is what it Mate. is. Well, hey guys, actually, with, with all of that in mind, have you? Can you tell us um, any like the best sort of secret night out you might have had where it was just wrong? You all knew it was not supposed to happen, and it did, and it was bloody awesome. The be- the best ones, uh, like we we went we toured with Vern Cotter, we toured Japan, and uh, it was it was a summer tour. So we've spoken about these yeah, summer yeah, tours. We've spoken before. about these summer tours. They're a holiday, aren't they, big fella? <laughs> Slightly more relaxed. Um, and it was it was it, the best nights, the best nights ever, or where they're not meant to be big nights out. Yeah. We went out to a lovely little restaurant and and had a few, just a couple of beers with your dinner. Yeah. But then yeah. in in rolls the karaoke machine, so you go, well, I'll have a couple more, and it turned I into a massive one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was one of those nights that we always go back to. How good was that night? Because it wasn't night? ever meant yeah. to. Oh. But that was a good one. We had a bloody good night that night. Bloody good night in Tokyo. Yeah, those are the best ones. Aren't oh, they? I think we had one on a preseason camp. Have you ever been to Browns? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So obviously it's like a it's like Villa Mura. A very, yeah, Villa Mura, and it's a very big week. You're like getting absolutely dusted out. This was with Bath years ago. This is great times. Anyway, on Wednesday. It was the day off, and they were like, "We're going to go into town. We're going to go into Villa Mora down the port. Have a nice, have a nice um, dinner." <laughs> Next minute, everyone's having a few, uh, few, a few froffies, a couple of yeasties. But then, like one of the physios gets up, a legend of a man, Kerry Jones, old cranium, real good jester, like silver tongued, very gifted wit. Um, he's a small man, very diminutive, can't handle his drink suddenly standing on a table, uh, seeing one off. And then then it just, that was what galvanised it. Everyone was still, was feeling it was there, just bubbling under. And then the next day, there were all these stories coming out from the boys. And you know, when they get the debrief in, and we got Luke Charles <laughs> was like, just coming back from rehab. He'd started doing weights again, and he had like mad doms. And um, the police of the port, a few of the boys got a little bit rambunctious, and they were looking for a very tall gentleman so they assumed it was Charts because he looked obviously like a giraffe amongst all these mere mortals, like some kind of freakish, like, what the hell is this? And they're just body bagging him. They're like, they were looking, we were, we've been looking for you. <laughs> so he's getting done. But as, actually, it was Charlie Yules who'd already gone home by this point because he, he just got it so wrong. He had to go back to the hotel. Oh, it was good times, man. George Ford would got in there, his hug and dance. He was eating it. He was part, he was with Charts and he was part of the collateral damage. Oh, it was great time. Trips like that. Trips like that. You remember? Let's let, let's go quickly now with um, the the RFU say they back Eddie Jones as the coach and the the team and and he are making progress. Hugo Monnier said that that statement is dishonest. What do we think? Have England made progress over the last couple of years, Ryan? Probably not. Probably not in terms of results, but. I think uh, for once I'm going to back him up and go. I think that they're in like they are in a big transition period. And like the only thing is, he always talks about the World Cup. That's his only downfall. He keeps talking about going towards the World Cup, but people want results all the time. And he's just got to find the team that he thinks is going to win him games at the moment. Like look yeah. at the teams of past that they've had. Like it was always there was a there was a call like a, a, through the spine of the team. There was those players that were there all the time. You know. The second rows, the Tojes, the Vunapolas, both brothers, you know, and obviously Owen Farrell is a, a key part of that um, that runs through them. So I, they haven't got that yet. Man, I completely, I completely agree with Ryan as well. I think, um, man, look, there's all. The, I think they've definitely got the right faces. They've assembled the team that also it like it's funny how the press just one eighty on. Like they were talking about how. I've just sort of talked about it before, how they need to drop these guys. This guy's dead. He's boring. And then suddenly results don't quite go their way because um, they're trying to blood new talent, bring in fresh guys who haven't been at this level yet against two really, really, really like 
good teams, by the way, in in Ireland and France this year, like like particularly good, better than they've been for years. And then they want to throw the baby out of the bar for. Uh, I just think it's a bit dishon. It's like there's no real self awareness there, in my opinion. But so you don't, you don't, you sort of disagree with Hugo Monnier's statement about the actual uh, saying that the statement is dishonest that they're making progress. You're saying that that's not you know, it's still a work in progress. And I do, I, yeah, it's sort of like what Ryan said, if you looked at it black and white definitively, and you looked at progress as a successful thing, and that would be W's versus defeats, then yeah, of course, that's not progress. But the team has gone through significant change. Like we'd look at all the faces that you associate in rugby with are sort of not there anymore. Yeah, now it's all a bunch of fresh faces. The only guys that are really there are like sort of people like Marrow. Like the rest of the, co- the 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 rest of the group are so different, um, and they haven't they haven't um, been sort of exposed to the, the 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 rigors and scrutiny of international rugby for like that that big period of time to really facilitate like becoming top performers at that level, in my opinion. I, I think that their hands been forced a little bit as well with the the injuries they've had with some of the guys that have had injured the two Alangis and um, Farrells and stuff as well. Yeah. So yeah, it, is, it has been forced because usually you wait for these summer tours and stuff, but yeah, give them time. They'll, they'll be all right. Here's, a, here's one of them right now in his uni flat. We're delighted to be joined by England and Leicester superstar, uh, Freddie Stewart, to discuss the Six Nations campaign and celebrate his uh, career to date. How, how are things in, uh, in your digs at the moment, Freddie? Yeah, very well, thank you. Back to... Got back yesterday, actually. So um, back in training today, preparing for Exeter at the weekend. Um, nice to see all the lads again, see some familiar faces. It was really good. Fred, I've got to ask you, mate. Right, so it's true. You live, it's still, is it uni digs or is it just a uni house? It's not uni digs. It is a uni house. So it's basically in, in Loughborough, which is where I'm studying. Because um, I can, so see, I can just, see the lock on the door. Oh, no, that's just so no one comes in halfway through <laughs> and interrupts. <laughs> Got on just for the podcast, mate. That's yeah. brilliant. I mean, I know I know what you boys get paid. So coming back to your uni, mate, it's with bags full of twenty five Gs every game. <laughs> You'll be laughing, loving it. No, it's nice. I, I love it here. You know, it's nice to be with with mates here from uni and and some of the boys at Tiger as well. It's just it's nice to have that sort of escape sometimes from from rugby. You know, I think if you if you live with with lads you you train with all the time, I feel like you can get a bit. You know. You get that cabin fever, so it's nice to sort of be able to get out now and then and, and enjoy myself. No, I bet Eddie Jones isn't saying that. I bet he wants you to move out there, doesn't he? Um, I'm well behaved, so there's there's no there's no issues with me being here at the minute. But I think yeah, I'll, yeah. it's probably the end of the road this year, and I'll be I'll be out on my own next year. Are you saving the 175k you just picked up over the <laughs> Six Nations for like a better for a better house next year? That would definitely be. That's gone straight into the savings. Yeah. <laughs> will you live, will you stay in Loughborough or you will move to Leicester? Um, I'll probably move a bit closer. Um, there's yeah, some lovely okay. villages in south of Leicester, which is closer yeah. to, to home home. So I'll probably look to move out there. You want to stay out of the middle of Leicester, don't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to end up there. How much are you being harassed by like mates of mates at uni or just slightly outside your inner circle being like, can I get tickets? No, it's it's not it's not been bad at all, really, which is nice. Um, I've sort of been 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 left on my own. Obviously, I've got the lads here, um, but just been been you know lying low to the library now and then because I'm way behind on my work. So if my lecturers are watching this, I'll probably be in trouble. But um, uh, I've been lots of catching up to do, so I'll probably be back in the library this evening to to crack on with that. Actually, what are you what studying? Are you, mate? What are you studying? Uh, economics. Wow. So yeah, I don't know what that is. Keeps me busy. <laughs> Ryan, it's where you it's where you keep the 175 grand and save it rather than buy yeah. the double decker bus. He knows what he's up to. He knows <laughs> what in he's a, stick doing. in a crypto, buy some NFT, son. You'll be yeah. straight. Are you actually um, passionate about economics though? Sorry, I just want to ask him one more. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, 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 passionate, maybe not so much. Interested, yes, but um, intrigued. So, okay. Some of yeah. it is interesting. Some of it's interesting. Um, I sort of yeah. got well bit of school, so I thought I might as well, uh, yes. you know, do it on the side because you never know what's going to happen, do you? So. Um, I've got far enough now where I sort of um, wanted to finish it rather than give up halfway through. So um, the, the end's in sight. So you've got like a brain. So you you're good with numbers essentially. You've got a good, uh, math, good math petition. Not I'm I'm all right. I'm very average. Maths is the bit I find the most difficult. So um, of economics, not okay. not not too. <laughs> but you're not also too. you're also like a 
a creative of some regard, aren't you? I saw I saw you playing the playing the guitar. Yeah, I actually it was it was lockdown. Um, lockdown the first lockdown. I sort of wanted something to do, so I bought myself a fifty quid guitar and thought I might as well learn it, try and learn it. So just watch some YouTube videos and all that sort of thing, and I've just sort of carried on. So um, that's yeah, another another string to the bow. How good! How good! So you just, other... I bet, yeah, pick stuff up real easy, I bet. You're like that. Bobby <laughs> Lawrence last <laughs> week, mate. He was one of them. Just anything he picks up, he's just like, yeah, he's, he's, he's got into it. Have you got any other hobbies or interests like this? Um, <laughs> not really. Guitar and uni is about as exciting as it gets. Yeah, that's not quite a too lot. Much. International rugby. <laughs> quite a lot on your plate, to be fair. Freddie, congratulations on scoring against the French on Saturday. You're playing on the wing. What, what was the thinking behind that? Um, it was just, it, it was something different, something different for me. I've sort of played on the wing every now and then, but um, wanted to, to attack them in the air. I think I wanted to, you know, that's, that's a strength of mine and wanted to sort of get into the game as, as quickly as possible. And that was sort of a position where, you know, we thought it'd be best best to do that. Again, was it something to do with, the because the French, like, they started the last couple of weeks to kick the ball a lot as well and put a lot of, Put the ball in the air a lot. Was that part of a tactic for Eddie to to get a couple of fullbacks on the field to make sure you're looking after that? Yeah, they they kick a lot. I think they're the highest kicking team in the tournament. So um, it was definitely something you know to to try and counter that. Um, get a couple of fullbacks out there. Have you dropped one yet, mate? Because I, I'm swearing. You, 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 you say that. You, you say that, but I did drop an absolute sitter against Scotland in the first game. Um, oh, I don't remember. So that, that still haunts me, but. Uh, no, it's, it's been going all right. Fucking hell. Unbelievable, mate. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan's been waxing lyrical. And even when, and, and Max as well. And then when we had um, uh, your pal Freddie Burns on as well, he was saying that you, you don't really drop him in training either. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work that goes into it. You know, it's not something that just happens. I, I wish I could say I'm technically gifted, but I, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. You know, it's um, it's been a lot of, a combination of a lot of hard work, you know, after training, in training to, to get there. And there's still plenty more work to do. So I'll be um, I'll be working hard on that. Helps when you're seven foot two as well. It does. Yeah, that, that's definitely an advantage, isn't it? <laughs> what was what was sort of Eddie's reaction post-match and also from a personal perspective across the series for you? Yeah, I think obviously it was a disappointment that we we didn't quite get the results we wanted. You know, England as a, as a country are always looking to to win the Six Nations. That's the aim. Um, I think there was elements that we were we were proud of the fight that we put on. I think we battled hard, particularly um, the week before in the Ireland game when, when we went down, you know, a man in the first minute. Um, I think that that day was, although we didn't get the result, there was a, a lot of resilience shown and a lot of fight. Um, and that was definitely something to be proud of. But I think now that what's happened has happened, we can we can start focusing on you know the next the next job now, which is Australia in the summer, and how we can keep improving as a group, um, ready for the next World Cup. Where's your summer tour? Summer tour is Australia, Australia Ooh. this year, which will, which will be oh. yeah. Raul, Coogee, Coogee Bay baby, Coogee Bay <laughs> Hotel baby. Oh. Be careful of the bed bugs though; they'll get you. They'll get you. <laughs> Get down the pav. We'll have to give you some places to go. Do you know where you're playing? Are you playing in in Sydney? Um, I'm not too sure. Actually, I, I would imagine it's Sydney. I've never been. I've never left Europe. Actually, I'm not very well travelled. So, um... oh mate, this this I place think... Antipodean living. Oh my oh. god, it might change your mind about what's what's good in life. You won't want to come back, mate. Yeah, you I live yeah. up to Leicester. Oh my god, Leicester. <laughs> <I am. laughs> Bit different, aren't they? Bit different, I'd imagine. Oh were my. you were you around when Lockie McCaffrey was at Leicester? No, I wouldn't have been. No, I yeah, too young, too young, a bit too, uh, too young. Too young. Yeah. I went. I went to their house. It was the house was Ellis Genge, Toulouse Beanu, and him. <laughs> so I went. I went and visited them. Massive place. I was like, oh yeah. my god, this is nuts. Genji and uh, Lockie are arguing the whole time. I walk into I walk into Lockie's room and he's just getting up and he's like. Mate, I fucking hide in here. <laughs> it's like outside. It's like he's looking out the window. It's like Mordor, the skyline. And he's from, I think he's a Sydney boy. Oh, bro, I felt so bad for him. <laughs> him, and Ed, him and Gendry just wouldn't let each other go. It was nasty. And then, I like, can imagine. Just, I can like, imagine that was a bit of a, a madhouse, yeah. Glad, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Australia, you've, you've scored tries against the Aussies, against South Africa, and now against France. Was that French team the best team you played against so far? 
Um, yeah, I'd say so. I think South Africa was was a massive test in the autumn. They were they were unbelievable. Um, but that French team, you know, they've been brilliant all campaign. Obviously, got the Grand Slam. You know, they they were really well put together. They had a really simple game plan. I think they, I think they had a quite a simple game plan, but a very effective one. Um, they stick to it really well. And you know, they've got players who can produce moments of magic. You know, the the, the Dupont try, the offload for that bits of magic. Um, you know, they, they it can just come out of nothing. So, um, you know, fair play to them. They were they were a good side. Ryan, what was your assessment on uh, on that French side throughout the tournament? Oh, they'd been incredible, haven't they? And I think they're just going to get better as well. They're not old blokes. They're young blokes in there as well. Like Dupont, Entomac, some of the guys like Gal Ficou, how good has he been as well throughout the whole tournament? You know, they talk about him being the defensive leader. He's been incredible. Like final of the tournament for me, Villiers, again, unbelievable. Like backstory again as well with him. Awesome. Um, and then they've got some absolute mutants up front, haven't they? They're doing the yeah, job. So. Some big boys. Jesus, man. Like Antonio, when you see him in the flesh, you ju- every time you see him in the flesh, you double check that. You're like, yeah. oh, oh, oh yeah. he's actually that big. He's actually the, that the big. as well, the second row. He is oh. enormous, mate. He's enormous. You imagine Meta the food human. those boys put away. I know, yeah. Oh, man, Cyril Bai is a freak show as well, though. He's mm-hmm. like an extra back row playing loose head. And that's where I'm saying, you know, we spoke about earlier, Fred, is we were, we were talking about how England, I think, are trying to find their, their 15. France have got it. France, France have found it. And they're just, they're going to like tinker with little bits, but they've got that. And they, they keep sending that towards, send that towards the World Cup. They're going to be dangerous come the World Cup. Whereas we were talking, there was a lot of chat about what is England's 15 at the moment. And I think there's still little bits. You've had obviously a few injuries during the Six Nations, guys like Owen Farrell not there, Mano Tuolangi obviously in and out with another injury. Um, but France have just... Uh, the worrying thing is, have they peaked at the wrong time? But I don't know. I think they're young enough and wise enough. They've got winners in that team that they'll be bloody good come the World Cup in France. Holy mm. hecka. Yeah, they're a talented group, aren't they? They'll be, um, I think they'll be primed for that. <laughs> I would love um, to get out for a beer with them after the game as well. <laughs> Can you imagine how loose that would have been? The I think they're actually. The... I think they're on a boat. I think they had a boat on the <laughs> the same. I think was, was was what I heard. So that would have. Yeah, I bet that was um some fun. <laughs> did you guys get to do anything fun after your uh, after after the match yourselves? Um, no, not in Paris. No, we um we were back to the hotel. A couple of you know we had a few beers downstairs with, with all the lads together just to sort of. You know, nice to spend some time together after after a good eight weeks. Um, so that was sort of a nice nice way to finish, and then flew back the next day. How come you weren't allowed out? Um, I think this uh, we probably could have, could have done, but I think the consensus was, you know, we 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 were a bit disappointed with with the way we finished, and I think it was just a uh, nice to just to stay in the hotel, you know, and enjoy each other's company rather than rather than go out. You've obviously not done a night out in Paris, then, son. <laughs> <laughs> VIP rooms. Oh, God. Um, that is. That's a big one. I met. I saw Michael Jordan there. The one time I went. Really? I was like, what is wow. this? Man? What? Yeah. <laughs> How weird is that, mate? I went to the Stade Francais. They'd won it that year, and I just happened to be going through Paris. I was doing a Euro trip. It was off season. They just won it, so all the big dogs were there. Um, Hugh Parl invited me down at the time. I used to play with them at Rebels. And if we're looking in the corner, there was this massive entourage. Everyone was wearing um, Air Jordan gear. And I was like, what's going on over there? And then Pilot's like, yeah, my, um, uh, Michael Jordan's in the building. What? And then, mate, he, oh. bro, he's got the cigar, the rings, the whole shebang, looking oh. like an absolute baller. It was nutty. That would have been a while back. Place. Yeah, but all of his all of his crew are wearing his gear. Like, yeah, that's how it, that's how it, that's, that's how you roll. Nuts, it. isn't it? That that's is like Nolsey. Everyone wears mustard around him. He's <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Fred, so you know that training session at Bristol you guys had? Yes. Is that like a, is that, a, was that, would that be a pretty typical session for you boys? Yeah, that was our, because it was the fallow week, we had our, like our big training session. It was, it's like representing a game almost. Obviously, we oh, don't have okay. a game at the weekend. So um, that was uh, a t- like a, one of one of the harder sessions we, we would do. But um, that was, yeah, it was a <laughs> tough session that day. Well, what happened some... there, Max? Did he get, did he get gnarly, did it? Oh, there was some good, mate. That um, sip where Sam Simmons making that break was class, though. 
where he's yeah. like scored. I was like, that is mad. Bro, he's run yeah. from like the upper try line. He's made a line break. He's just dusting everyone off. I was like, this is nuts. <laughs> yeah, Simo's yeah. an absolute beast. He's a beast. Yeah. He was doing the back drills, some of them, wasn't he? He, he does was, like... I think he was sort of, yeah, he was mixing it up in and out, doing a bit of everything. But he's um, he's an unbelievable player. He's got it all, hasn't he? Really does. Well, they're, they're sticking you on the wing and they got Genji <laughs> running it back from 15. What was going on there? <laughs> well, oh, Genji yeah. is, I tell you what, he made some meters, didn't he? He's, yeah. um, he's a hard man to stop. So, you know, he, he, he actually made, I think he made, must have made the most, he can't be far off most meters in the game. He was, um, you know, he's, he's another guy who, he's like, he's a prop, obviously, but he, his running game, um, I think even his handling, like his tips and his inside balls, those sorts of things, the bloke is, he's class. Who's your England bestie? My England bestie. It's a good question. That it would. I think Radders. Radders when he was in camp, I get on really well with him. Oh, um, yeah. And then recently, I uh, Alfie Barbary. We roomed together in the Ireland week, I think it was, and the start of the France week, and we get on well. So that was nice. Uh, who's the best value there? Is sort of most entertaining person in camp. The most entertaining in camp, um, Joe Marla. He is just brilliant. Like he's, he knows how to, to to get a room laughing. He um, he's a funny guy. So um, I'd have to say him. You got misses, Fred? No, I don't know, mate. I am I'm single. Oh, god. <laughs> oh my god! But, so, like we had uh, Lewis Free Summit on here. who he was saying like he he was he was he was hoping after his try against Scotland that he would get inundated and he didn't get any really any really good ones. Have you not had some good like? Sup on in, your people sliding into your DMs just out of nowhere, mate. No, no, there's, there's no, there's nothing. No, no, none of that. Yeah, as you can tell, you sure? <laughs> very, you very sure? different characters, though, <laughs> old Freddie and old Lewis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, imagine Lewis down there with his Balenciaga Gucci. You know what I mean? Like the full yeah. Louis Vuitton handbag and, you know, just wanting about, fake tan the lot. But, but yeah, no, Freddie's a Leicester purist, mate. Yeah. None of that, mate. Yeah, yeah none of that. Absolutely. Stay grounded, stay grounded. Don't let it change. Exactly. Freddie, you get to train and play under two amazing coaches in, in Steve Borthwick and Eddie Jones. You tell us how, how they differ in their sort of coaching methods and techniques. Um, there's there's differences and there's similarities. Um, it's been like to work with Steve this these last two years now has been unbelievable. You know he's been he's turned the club around. Um, him him and all the staff and and the players that has been you know unbelievable to be part of and and hopefully we can sort of continue on that trajectory. Um, Steve's pretty, he's very um, very meticulous and it's very he's he's a guy you trust absolutely because you know that everything that you know we're doing is. Is sort of founded on on you know some some stats or or the way the game's going. He's very informed, so you know he's he's a brilliant guy. And, and Eddie's Eddie's similar as well in in that regard. You know with with stats and that sort of thing. And and um it's it's been brilliant to work with them both. What about bringing the boys together? Like what? Who's better at that? Because obviously Steve Borfoot, renowned obviously you know from where he's come from to to be able to bring that culture and pull the boys together. How how does he go about it, and what's difference what's the difference between him and Eddie again? Like, because it's very different bringing an England team together, people from everywhere. You've only got a short amount of time, but with what he's done to Leicester, there's got to have been something significant there that he's done to to pull the boys together. Yeah, I think um, you know Leicester now is is uh, it's a brilliant place to be because Steve sort of he's got a really good group of people. Um, he's you know some of the some of the players are brought in. It's not just you know being good at rugby that's, that's brought players into the club, it's actually them being being good blokes as well. And I think that's like contributed to a really good atmosphere where, you know, we're really close outside of, of training, outside the club. Um, and obviously when, when you're close with blokes, you want to fight for them even more, don't you, on, on the field. So he's been, built this brilliant, brilliant environment um, at Tigers, which is, which is great to be a part of. And obviously at England, you know, it's different because you've got guys, some guys who, who you're at clubs with, some guys who, who you've never met before. Um, it's, it's a weird um, thing, you know, you can be thrown in a room, rooming with a guy who you've never met in your life and the next thing you know, you're sleeping in bed sort of this far apart and it's, um, it is, it's strange, but it's, it's been great like to, to meet new people and we've had, obviously, I mentioned the, the side of factory, but lots of little um, sort of social outings or, or team outings to sort of bond the team together. That's so true, what you say, like with what he's done there, like, 
it's not all about superstars and these unbelievable players. That you've got to have those blokes, that, good men, like bring the team together. There's always got to be those blokes in the team, like. Freddie Burns, again, he's got to be one of them. Like, I'm not saying he's bad at rugby, but he was even jokes himself, you know. I'm always there on hand when needed. But he's one of those blokes. I bet you having him around, like the energy he gives out, it's people like that that, that help bond the players together, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Burns, he's been class. He, um, he's he's, the, D, he's a, the nominated DJ in the gym. He's always, you know, got something up his sleeve to get the boys laughing. So, um, you know, he's been a brilliant addition. Um We've learned as as young guys, we've learned so much of him. You know, he's he's been around for years, um, and he's, he's a great bloke to have around. Another one of your teammates, Dan Cole, said that your performances in the Six Nations can actually help Leicester to go on and win the Premiership title. How how do you feel about getting that sort of praise? Well, that's uh, yeah, I, I that's um, I love Cole. He's he's a legend. Um, he's another old head who is you know a great guy to have around sort of sits in the corner and, you know, go and have a, a chat and a laugh with Coley. It's, um, he's almost like the dad of the group. But to, to hear that from from someone who's, who's you know, done as much as he has and achieved what he's done is, is special, actually. So, yeah, thanks, Coley. <laughs> I've heard he's funny. I've never he actually come dry, across him. Dry, I, I mean, like the, it's like the Gobi Desert dry, but very I've, I've good. I've played yeah. against him a couple of times, England, Scotland. He's just looking at me on, you fucking English. <laughs> 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 and you just got to laugh at it, haven't you? But like, I've, from what I've heard, he's a funny bloke. Yeah, exactly what you say, Max. Dry as you yeah. like. Yeah, he's good in games Brilliant. as well. Like he gets amongst it. Loves a bit of a loves a bit of a chin wag. Yeah, it's people like him and Marla, chalk and cheese, isn't it? Like they're just yeah, they yeah. shouldn't be together, but when they are, they're perfect. Yeah, yeah. They're brilliant. <laughs> and you've obviously been involved with England for a year now. Do you think you guys can win the World Cup? Yeah, I think you know you have to you have to believe that. You know, you're going to win the World Cup. I think as a team, we're not there yet. We know that. We understand that. And I think that's been been evident with the results. But the next year is going to be really exciting. Um, you know, it's although it didn't happen for us this campaign, I think the boys together know that it's we're 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 getting there. And we're there's there's little bits in games that went you know where we thought we 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 could have done it and we didn't do it. Um, so we're, it's like we're almost there. Um, so I think the boys are really excited um, about what's to come. Just a quick one. Who's the toughest player you came up against in the Six Nations? Um, I think Liam Williams was someone who I was really, really excited to play against. Um, obviously, he's a, another fullback who one of his best strengths is in the air. So for me, that was a really exciting prospect to go toe to toe with, with one of the best in the world. Um, Not the biggest he, man. He is, he's a strong bloke, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's very strong. Um, scaffolder very strong by trade, that man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he, a scaffolder, um, old Sam. I didn't he's, know that. Yeah, he's, he's he's a tough bloke. Like, when you hit him, you're just like, you, you shouldn't be able to do this. Mm. Why, why are you so hard to hit? He is. He's very strong. He's a good runner. He's he's very well-rounded. So, you know, he's a guy. Like, it's, it's weird for me because so many of these guys I've sort of come up against have, have been guys that I've watched, like, growing up. Um, like 15, 16 years old watching the Six Nations at home and you see them playing and now, you know, you're, you're playing against them and with them. It's uh, it's a bit crazy, really. <laughs> How old are you, Freddie? Oh, I'm 21. Yeah. Oh, God damn well, it. Well, like, <laughs> like, I, I mean, what was I? I must be about... I don't even know how old I was when I got my first cap, but even I was a little bit in awe of some of the players I was coming up against. And like you said, you've been watching these guys since you're a youngster and suddenly being in there, I mean, it must be like that, even with some of the players in there as well, like coming into camp and going, I can know I'm actually with like the likes of Owen Farrow, who's been around for ages, Ben Young, players like that. Like I just, yeah, fucking 21, man. Yeah. Jesus. But It's um, it, it's hard actually, because you, you sort of got to put that awe and stuff to the side because, you know, you can't go in and be like, Oh, you know, like that, because you, that almost distracts from, from the job in hand and, and what you're trying to sort of sort of do. So um, no, it, to start with, it was definitely it was a bit like wow, this is this is incredible. Um, but then you know the more the more time you spend and, and the more experience you get, you know you just know that you've got to sort of do the job in hand. Who is the chirpiest opponent? Oh, there's not. Um, Liam Williams is another guy. I remember I mentioned him again because I remember in the Wales game. I was I think it was the kickoff actually. Um, I was uh, next to, to Marcus. Um, sort of in a position where I could go and get it and Liam Williams was directly opposite me and we were just smiling at each other 
um, just for a couple of seconds, um, just having a grin. But there's there's not been. I, not the, been I, come on, much. out of the Irish team. There wasn't. Honestly, that game was one that was. There wasn't too much. I suppose being at fullback, you're not always in the the thick of it. So. Um, probably didn't experience like some of it as much as some of the other boys will have done. Um, but there James was, Lowe, no, there was James Lowe playing in that game. James Lowe was playing in that game. Um, he's actually he, there was one kick I did where he sort of hit me. Not it wasn't late, but it was um, it was on the edge, and he, he actually came up and apologised after the game. You know, he's a really nice guy, so I got a lot of time for that. Um, yeah, listen, nice guys, much. but on the field, Bandiaki. There wasn't, honestly, there wasn't too much. <laughs> I, 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 I would love out. to tell you, I, I'd love to it's... tell you that there was, you know, an inter- but there, honestly, there was, um, there wasn't too much off the ball antics. It was um, sort of played in, in good spirit. Sexton, Peter Armani. And... <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's just more popular with the Irish than you'll ever be, mate. That's all. Uh, I'm joking. I love them all. They're all my mates. <laughs> love you. Right, let's let's uh, let's move on to the Max's Book Club before we let Freddie go. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's m- move on to Max's Book Club. Freddie, it's really pretty simple. Uh, Max reads a passage from a player's autobiography, and you and Ryan have to guess who wrote it. Lovely. Accents, Perfect. please, yeah. Max. Accents. Uh, if there's speech things, I'll do it. I'll do. I'll do a bit of it later in uh, an accent for you, gentlemen. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Kieran Reed, Luke Romano, Sam Whitelock and I had formed a very firm card school that season, spending countless hours playing hands of 500 and keeping the score. Luke and I invariably won and Sam would pack us sad and not talk to us for at least a day. He was a terrible loser and because we knew that, we also upped the ante for our regular dinners together. He had been agreed that the bill was always to be sorted by an old-fashioned game of credit card roulette. Sam also lost that all the time. It got so bad for him that his wife, Hannah, started to call to complain that the combined dinner bills for the four of us represented a family holiday or a new kitchen or anything else that was more important to Hannah than four very hungry all black fours. Fortunately, Sam managed to dodge the bullet this night, but I was not so lucky. I was left with the docket and then would surely hear all about it from Jenna. It was a small fortune, but a delicious meal. So at least I figured we had all got our money's worth. Unfortunately, as we were all about to discover, it didn't taste so good coming back up. (laughs) That night, all four of us were struck down by a stomach virus that was making its way through the entire team. The whole floor of the hotel was a heaving mess of vomiting all blacks. The team doctor, Deb Robertson, doing her best to isolate, medicate, and comfort the sick and the needy. It was hell of a scene, and barely a single team member was spared. The worst of the symptoms had thankfully disappeared by the time we got to game day, but there was no way any of us was up to the challenge laid down by England that afternoon at Twickenham. They posted their highest score ever against an all-black side that day and handed us a record-setting defeat at 38-21. If I didn't already have a sour taste in my mouth from this week's illness, I certainly did after that post-match function during which a particularly, a particularly obnoxious English fish head Talk for the eternity about his side being the best team in the world. I'm all for celebrating a big win, but the lack of graciousness really pissed me off. The All Blacks. I'm all for celebrating a big win, but the lack of graciousness really pissed me off. That's my Kiwi accent. Yeah, I, well, I guess he was a Kiwi. <laughs> yeah, I think so. That, that was yeah. He's not giving us much there, is he, Freddie? Not yeah. really. It's an All Black who played against England in that game, so... When they were food poisoned. Yeah. When, how um, long ago was that? That must have been five years, five or six years ago, I'd have thought. Mark, can you confirm? Was that five years ago? Am I supposed to be listening during this section? Okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, got, it's got to be a forward. It's got to be a forward. If it's if he's hanging around with three forwards, I'd imagine he'd also be a forward. 100% a forward, um, yeah. Both maybe it's... I was thinking Brody Vitalik. Um, I think... Guy. The, well, he, yeah, he's got a book out. He's got a book out, obviously. Okay, so this guy, this guy, book out. This guy's uh, quite. Um, I don't know if you think of him. He's. I'll give you. He's a front rower. Ooh. It was December two, twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Oh, it wasn't five years ago. Wow. Yeah, it was a while. Like, ten, yeah, years 2012, ago. ten years ago. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. Prop. Ooh, I think that's the game Manu got weird and just started 
curb and stomping people mm. off the disconnect. So, so you were 11 back then. Right? I was 11, so I might be struggling here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To so be fair, this, I was only, I would only been like 19. This guy's renowned for being the fittest dude ever. The fittest man ever. Fittest, he's a, like he's a front row. He's a front row, very fit. All right, subjectively speaking. Right, well, name name the front row from um, from the All Blacks uh, when you were eleven, please, Freddie. I'm I'm, tr- I'm racking my brains, but I am really struggling there. Saders, really struggling. Part of the Mikey Saders, the Crusaders of Canterbury. Who was uh, who was the um, hooker? Who was the hooker? Um, I've got. Is, hang on, is it a hooker. No, wait. Let's see if Freddie's got Franks. It. Franks. Oh, no, no. But he's he's pretty cool, but not that guy. No. No, I'm I'm stuck. Frank's, I am. No, 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 Frank's Coles. I can't. Um, Another... good, good longevity, but not. It wasn't. It was. It was sort of. He was more of a sort of sec. He was a second string kind of guy. He had. A f- he did start a bit, but he was behind um, Trevor Woodcock. Uh, he was behind Woodcock. Oh, hold on. Is it? Is it Crockett? Absolutely, very good, Rye. Nice, Freddie. Yes. I really liked your input there. Thanks. Outstanding, <laughs> outstanding, lads. Why Crockett? Right, we are going to do our very final thing. Hold on, I just want to ask Freddie one quick question. Do you reckon you could do the Gloucester Milk Challenge? Just tell me yes or no. The Gloucester Milk Challenge, no. But you're a well, big man and you've got a big frame. Yeah, I but that's a lot can. of milk. It's a lot of milk. Okay. Even for a big man. Well, yes, so, Freddie, I'm have to this say no. is- this is exactly the moment where you're about to find out which one of the two big men ish uh, are going to be doing this. Oh, wow. Uh, it's our ASX section. And essentially speaking, Ryan and Max have been going head to head throughout the Six Nations, picking three players uh, from a designated tie. So, you know, England, France, they would have picked three players each and seen who has got uh, the most. Uh, points and or dollars how they've uh, uh, how they've done over that time and the loser has to do the Gloucester milk challenge just to bring you up to date Freddie Max has been destroying Ryan every single week even when Birdsey and Ollie Lawrence stepped in they destroyed Ryan there is there is some jeopardy because quite literally Max has been thrashing Ryan Ryan has been very poor throughout but Ryan has crushed Max this week. Uh, this week, thanks to Sam Underhill earning him an incredible two thousand two hundred and sixty-five dollars in dividends, ending his dividends earned at two seven three five seventy compared to Max's paltry one five four seventy this week. So, so scores on the doors for the Gloucester Milk Challenge. Max, you earned one thousand five hundred dollars and eighty cents overall. Ryan. You earned three thousand four hundred and seventy-eight dollars and fifty-four cents overall. Congratulations to Ryan Max against all the odds. You are doing the milk challenge, mate. If I could do the gritty right now, I'd do the gritty. All right, fine. <laughs> Wait, oh my so god, I absolutely hammered you. I, I'm, I'm the, the king of ASL. We've done a net. Oh, sorry. Oh, we were just hoping in in when when we were thinking when the results came in, there was going to be some form of you know where. Ryan took this, uh, you know, graciously. There was, there has been an issue though, Ryan, unfortunately, oh. because you you cheated by spending over thirteen hundred dollars <laughs> rather than the budget of one thousand dollars. Hence, uh, uh, the panel uh, has yeah. said you've been disqualified. No, 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 no. You will now face the Gloucester Milk Challenge in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> Congratulations to Max. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, hold on a minute. Right I, right on. Right. Right. Well, so, no, I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. What? Do you think I put my own money into it? I haven't. I spent the thousand dollars they give me. You, you, you cheated. My production is saying you spent three hundred over over budget. How did I do that? that? I don't understand how I would have done that. God bless. God bless you. I can't wait you know. to see you lactate. Listen, so, listen. I'm I'm more than happy to do the challenge. I'm more than happy to do it because I reckon hey, if you complete it, it, I'll follow you in. I'll have milk ready. Right, okay. <laughs> Wait, am, I, am I supposed to say the same thing as well? Yeah, I'll, if you do yeah, yeah. it, I'll, I'll do it as well. Hold right. on, I'm trying to look at this. You don't have the innards for this, Mark. I'm, I'm telling you now, though. I don't, I don't even know how you look at it. 
Freddie, do you I give know. him any chance? Any chance whatsoever? No, I remember at 20, some of the Gloucester lads I was mates with told me about it and it just sounds horrendous. I think you've got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just give me a quick, uh, right. what, what would no you do if you go, well, so it's four litres, is it four litres? I think so, yeah. So I think would you go chop a litre? Leave it five minutes. Chop a litre. No, no, I'd go. Yeah. I'd go slow and steady. It's just sit, sit, sit. I think sit, if you sit, chop sit. and chop, then you're just gonna. It's just gonna be terrible. Wait, Ryan, you had. Wait, Ryan reckoned he'd he'd broken the system by what you do is you absolutely you you do what was it? It was one, and then just before the twenty minutes is up, you you hose down the last three litres. It's not a bad idea, actually. That's actually because it's just got to be. It's just got to be inside your body on the twenty minute mark, and then. Wow. Jack, Jack, remember when Jack drunk that milk? He thought it would be easy. Mate, he nailed a, 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 a litre like that. See ya. Yeah, but there's three more to go, isn't there? Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. Oh, but hold on. Uh, l- listen, let's not, we won't get t- into it too much here, but I, I really don't think I've cheated. I think I've absolutely smashed it out of the park. Because you know what I did? I went and had a look. Sam Underhill, he hasn't played for ages. Yeah, so, he's, so he's he wouldn't have had so yeah. I just chuck all my money on him, and then I think it was. You have to have split it between three, oh, don't you? Oh, hold on, it, you know the other one, Genge. Yeah, you had to. I put I put a dollar on Vilimsa. I, I got one share. Then I put the rest on Genge, and obviously he was backfield. And I'm like, well, hold on, I must have had inside knowledge here. But that's not cheating. That's I knew that Genge would be running it back. And then I put loads of money on Sam Underhill. I didn't cheat. I didn't put my money in anyway. I'm happy with that. Enough said. Enough said. I'm well, I won. I'm okay, so happy well, I won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you both have. Well, Ryan, you're still doing it. So on that, on that yak shell, if you will. Thank you guys uh, so much as always for for tuning in. Thank huge thanks to to Ryan and to Max and Freddie. Good luck with the rest of the season. Thanks a lot for being uh, for being so great on the show. And to everybody else listening, do like, do subscribe, and we'll see you all next week. Cheers, Freddie. Thanks Thank you very much. Cheers, Freddie. Take it easy, bro. Nice to meet you. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. Nice. Thank you.